Hello and welcome to Reptile Top 10s. Today's episode is going to be on reptiles in mythology. Reptiles have always had a place in mythology, symbolizing everything from evil to new beginnings. In this episode of Reptile Top 10s, we will be uncovering 10 of the coolest and most bizarre reptiles in popular myths. Number 10. The first myth today comes from Greek mythology and is the story of Tiresias. Tiresias was a wise oracle featured in many Greek stories, but how he became an oracle is the interesting part. One day, Tiresias was walking on a mountain when he came across two mating snakes. Depending on the version of the story, Tiresias either stepped on one of the snakes or purposely beat it to death. When the snake died, Tiresias was transformed into a woman. He remained a woman for seven years, long enough for him to get married and have kids. After seven years, Tiresias was walking when he saw two mating snakes again. He jumped at the chance and trampled the snakes down. This, of course, turned him back into a man because, you know, what else? Later, Hera and Zeus are arguing about whether men or women enjoy love more. When they ask Tiresias who derives more pleasure from love, Tiresias tells Hera and Zeus that women get far more pleasure from love, which outrages Hera and causes her to strike Tiresias blind. To compensate Tiresias, Zeus makes him a wise seer. So it all basically worked out in the end? Number 9. The next reptile comes from Chinese mythology and is commonly called Dadaka. The Dadaka was an ancient lizard possibly inspired by the Bengal monitor. Stories about the Dadaka involve it mating with civets creating half-lizard, half-cat humanoids. In ancient Chinese myths, these lizard-cat hybrids were direct ancestors to humans. In some tribes, people would tattoo or paint themselves like cats to honor their half-cat, half-reptile ancestors. Number 8. Number 8 on the list shows that not only were reptiles not always the bad guy, but were sometimes the hero. In Greek mythology, the first king of Athens, Cecrops, was described as having the torso of a man, but the tail of a snake from the waist down, like some sort of reptile mermaid. Most accounts of him are favorable, although sometimes rebellious to Zeus. Cecrops is credited with teaching Athenians reading, writing, and ceremonial burial. Number 7. The next myth takes us to medieval Europe and is the first dragon on the list. The Jaculus was a small but vicious dragon. Its name literally translates to javelin and comes from its tendency to perch in trees and wait for unsuspecting travelers to pass by. When they were close enough, the Jaculus would launch itself like a javelin at the necks of its victims, killing them on impact. The sheer speed of a Jaculus attack made it one of the most feared dragons in medieval times. Number 6 Our only North American reptile myth comes from the Iroquois Indian creation myth. The reptile in this story is the entire earth. The Iroquois Native Americans believed that a pregnant woman in the sky world told her husband that she was going to give birth to two twins. In a rage, he tore a tree from the ground in the center of the sky world, revealing a hole to a water world far below. The husband pushed his wife down the hole, but the birds were able to catch her and guide her fall onto the back of a giant turtle. The sky woman and other animals covered the turtle's back with mud, turning it into land. The woman eventually gave birth to two boys, one named Sapling, who created all that was good, and the other named Flint, who created all that was bad. Together, they made the world we know today. Number 5 Bringing the list to number 5 is the story of Chi Li. In this Chinese myth, there was a giant dragon-like serpent that lived in the mountains in a cave above a peaceful Chinese village. The serpent had killed many in the town and was said to be wider than ten hands and seventy to eighty feet long. None of the village's soldiers were able to slay the serpent, but eventually the emperor learned he could placate the beast by sacrificing a thirteen-year-old girl to the dragon every year. That's where Chi Li comes in. Chi Li knew her parents failed to have a son and would have no one to provide for them in their old age, so Chi Li offered herself a sacrifice in the tenth year of the tradition so that her family would receive money from the emperor as payment for her life. Of course, her parents loved her and would not allow her to go, so Chi Li had to sneak out. She took a sword, malt sugar rice balls, and a snake hunting dog. When she reached the dragon's cavern, Chi Li tempted it out with the rice balls and let the dog attack. Stunned by the dog's bite, the serpent turned its attention to the dog just long enough for Chi Li to drive the sword through the beast's back, successfully slaying the dragon. Chi Li returned safely to the village with the dog and the skulls of the nine of the snake's other sacrifices. As reward, Chi Li was made queen and her family never had to worry about money again. Number 4 
The fourth creature on this list will be familiar to any mythical beasts watching this. I am talking about the cockatrice. Before being the mascot of the hit internet show Good Mythical Morning, the cockatrice got its start in early Christianity as the basilisk, which was Greek for little king. By medieval times, the basilisk story had evolved into the cockatrice. The cockatrice was described as a half-bird, half-dragon creature that is born when a snake or toad incubates a bad chicken egg. The resulting cockatrice was said to possess the ability to turn people to stone with its gaze, poison any rivers it drank from, and had the ability to breathe fire. Its only weakness was thought to be mirrors, as it could turn itself into stone, and mongooses because they were immune to the cockatrice's abilities. Many people believe that parts of the cockatrice legend were inspired by the cobra, which would explain why a mongoose would have any chance of taking down a creature that breathes fire and turns everything to stone. Number 3. The next reptile on the list comes from China and is known as the Bashi. The Bashi was first described during the Han Dynasty and was said to be 270 meters long, which works out to be over 880 feet long. The Bashi reportedly ate an elephant once every three years and would regurgitate the bones once the elephant was digested. According to legend, people used these regurgitated elephant bones as a remedy for heart disease. Typical colors for the Bashi were rather ambiguous, ranging from green, black, violet, or yellow. However, despite the lack of specificity as to the Bashi's color, I doubt anyone had trouble identifying it. Number 2 Number two takes a list back to ancient Greece and is one of the most well-known mythical reptiles, the Hydra. The Hydra was a large dragon that was said to have poisonous breath. However, its most famous attribute is its ability to regrow two heads for every one that is lost in battle. Heracles was able to slay the beast by shooting it with flaming arrows, cutting off each head and burning each open neck wound to prevent the head from growing back. After finally slaying the beast, Hera was angry that Heracles was able to slay the Hydra, so she gave him cancer. And by that I mean she sicked a giant crab on Heracles. So you win some, you lose some. Number one. Finally, the number one reptile in mythology, the Jermungand, or Serpent of Midgard. The Serpent of Midgard was a giant snake or dragon that was so big it was able to encircle the entire world. The serpent was one of Loki's children with Angrobata, and was meant to bring on the end of the world in a battle with Thor in Ragnarok. Thor came close to battling the Midgard serpent once by fishing for it, but when he reeled it in, the giant Himmer cut the line because he knew a battle between Thor and Hormungan would end the world. It is said the next time Thor and the serpent of Midgard cross paths, their battle will bring about the end of our world. So that is it, the list of the top 10 coolest and most bizarre reptiles in mythology. If you think I missed any or have a mythological reptile story to share, please comment below. And I really mean that. I, I obviously love reptiles, enough so to make a channel dedicated to the subject, so I am very interested in what you have to say. And of course, if you liked this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to see my next video on the best reptile camouflage. So that's it for this video. Have a great week.